In the prologue time trial then, uh, to start off this race, Laurent Jalibert here trying desperately to make sure he can put his name up there in light. So many of the top favourites not riding uh, this year in the Tour of Spain. And so for Jalibert, a chance perhaps then to take over the Amarillo jersey at the end of the prologue time trial. This, the 50th Volta, the Tour of Spain. It's going to be the most open race for many, many years. Jalibert, winner of the Green Points jersey in the Tour de France. He finished fourth over on that race, had started the season in fine form. He took the Paris-Nice and looks to keep his form into the Tour of Spain. A tough time then for Jan Brunel. The fastest time being posted so far in the product time trial, that of Johan Brunil, his teammate, the Onse team, dominating so far the top three places in the product time trial. Johan Brunil in the lead, 8.04. Mari is up there as well. Well, without the triple victor, Tony Rominger, who's chosen not to ride after winning the Tour of Italy, and then struggling in the Tour de France, and without the five times Tour de France winner, Miguel Indrain, who also misses his home tour to concentrate on the World Championships. It could be an opportunity then for Jalabert to come through and take that uh, Amarillo jersey, not only now, but right the way through for three weeks, the Tour of Spain, covering some 3,750 kilometres, 21 stages in all. So Jalabert won the many, many hopefuls hoping to be there at the finish on the top of the victory rostrum. Using that very aerodynamic bicycle, the monocoque look frame with the disc wheel at the back to allow the air to flow past it, looking for every aerodynamic efficiency he could do. Jalabert, the sprinter turned all round Roman, had this time to beat. This is Brunil coming across the line. Eight minutes and four seconds was the fastest. And when Jalabert came across the line, it was the same. He also did 8.04. Next to go for the Benesto team, Casero. Winner of the Tour de l'Avenir last year. Without Miguel Indrain in the Benesto team, it looked like a fairly light team, but Casero going round set up a time of 8 minutes and 13 seconds. That put him in the top 10 spots. But Ugramov, desperate to have a great ride in the Tour of Spain this year. Came out of the start house, determined to do a good ride. You can see by his conventional bike here, he's not one of the specialists when it comes to time trialing, except, of course, when the time trials are in the mountains. So they're concentrating hard here. Another man with his eyes on the top spot in three weeks' time. Having finished second in the Tour de France this year when he won a stage, he looked like he's going to win the Tour of Switzerland as well when he took the prologue time trial, but got picked the post two days ago when Tonkov roared up the big mountain and took the jersey off him. Zolo put in a starting performance all the way around this course. He rode very, very hard indeed. Using that, again, very aerodynamic bicycle. This lanky fellow, not perhaps the greatest stylist against the watch, but a formidable competitor. The man who surprised everybody by taking the yellow jersey in the Tour de France a couple of years ago when it started at San Sebastian. Did a good, useful uh, product time trial there and then took the time bonuses in the first sprint of the day to take the yellow jersey. Never quite lived up to his reputation. Now, that second place, the Tour de France uh, this year, shows that he's got what it makes if he just can get the break. Will this be his opportunity this year? Well, the ride for Zola was a cracking ride. He went round in seven minutes and 55 seconds to set the fastest time in the prologue. Adriano Baffi setting off. Had started the season in fine form. He'd won the Ruta del Sol. He'd also won the Tour of Mercia when he had won the final time trial, and he hammered round the course. Baffi then, time 8.03. Good enough to put him way up there in contention, but top spot. Ugramov still powering around the course. Close, compact rider. Looks like he might uh, be leaving the Gavis team at the end of this season. 
Many changes going on right now, but still they're riding for that one chance to say, yes, I won the Tour of Spain. But for Yugramov, it was not to be a top spot. He finished 16th overall, a time of 8 minutes and 16 seconds. Richard Veronk riding for the Lotus team. Again, not the world's greatest time trialist. The King of the Mountains, Victor, in the Tour de France when he finished ninth overall. Was going to put a time of 8 minutes and 19 seconds to be 25th. Pantani, another great mountain specialist, looking forward to the finishes. We've got, uh, what, three of them up the mountains to finish the stages, particularly when we get into the Pyrenees. Pantani was going to lose 50 seconds on the victor. But still, he can pull that back in the mountains. But Bjorn Rees then third in the Tour de France. Again, looking for a good start to uh, the Tour of Spain. Riding off in the National Championship jersey of Denmark. Was on his way to record a time of 8 minutes and 6 seconds, which would put him 7th overall. Last man to go. Abraham Olano has got a very good reputation indeed when it comes to the longer time trials. Riding off last because the MAPE team was the team that Tony Romiga rode for when he won last year. Buffy for the MAPE team had already posted a very good time of 8 minutes 03. The Onse team had been dominating the classifications early on, but bit by bit they were being harried. And this man, Alano, all the time checks showed as he went round the prologue time trial that he was cutting away at uh, the fastest time of the day, 7 minutes 55 seconds, put up by uh, Alex Zuller of the Onse team. Ex Spanish national time trial champion, Alano was on a great ride. But not only is he a good time trial, he also won the Spanish Road Championship as well. And so his team manager looking for great things from this rider, who's tipped as a very up-and-coming man, but he just doesn't seem to quite have that killer instinct. But on this prologue time trial, he was really hurting himself all the way round. All encouragement from his team manager and a determination to take that Amarillo jersey for Spain and for Mape came to good effect, flashing across the line in 7 minutes 51 seconds. Winner of the prologue time trial, Abraham Olano. Abraham Alano, 7 minutes 51 seconds. Alex Zuller's time looked to cracker, but he was pushed back into second spot. So there we have the Mape riders, uh, first and third, forming a neat little sandwich with Zuller in between them. Johan Brunil also a Mape into fourth spot. Laurent Jalabert was fifth for the Anse team. So Anse uh, taking the second, uh, fourth and fifth spots. But here, the Amarillo jersey going on the shoulders of Abraham Alano, ready for the first road stage the 186 kilometres from Zaragoza to Lozano. Fairly flat course ahead of him, but the sprinter, Buffy, certainly will be looking after trying to get some bonuses at the end of the stage. So Abidal Milano, though, victor in the prologue time trial, going into the first stage, wearing that jersey as overall leader. in Europe because Lotus is the brand of watches that are sold by the Lotus Lucina company in Spain. So you get a, a few changes in the jerseys here, which is just to confuse not only you, the good viewers back at home, but we commentators as well. Keep you on your toes. Four to go. Right. Gibis in the pale blue in the centre, setting it up for Minali, number 85. Let's see when the camera goes back. I'm sorry if you Gold people running a bit late, but they have had a strong headwind here. And there it is. Uh, that's the lot for Gibis for Benali. On the pink on the far side, the, the pink and white, uh, that's the telecom team. Begin to set it up for Zabel. Where are the TVM riders? Oh, 
And of course, Balavans might be having an off day. Not see much of the Novell team either at the moment. Yeah, our TVM right hand side, that's it over there. Uh, the red, uh, white, and yellowish colours coming through on the right hand side of your screen. That's TVM setting it up. Motorola over the far right hand side here. No good looking back. <laughs> Man is right behind you here. But it's, this, this pack's too big. They're too, they're too, uh, they've got to split this one down. It's uh, a little bit too slow at the moment. The sprinters won't like this one. They want their men to go a bit faster because some of the young hopefuls can come uh, thundering up from the back, uh, sheltered into this strong headwind by the sheer size of the bunch. Anyway, now Telecom will decide they've got to do something about it. Telecom in the pink and white. The pale blue in the centre then is Gavis for Minali. Telecom riding half as a bell. Twice stage victor in the Tour de France. Minali stage victor in the Tour de France last year in Portsmouth for the uh, Gavis team in the centre of the picture at the moment. The Mercatone Uno Psycho team beginning to set themselves up on the front there at the moment. Could be for uh, Biashi or Bartoli. We'll have to wait and see what they're going to do here. And then, yes, now they formed on the far side there. Motorola in the red and blue also now. So you've got to make about like a 14 time trial, haven't you? You've got Telecom, you've got Gavis, you've got Mercatone, you've got TVM all lined up here at the moment. All their sprinters in there, shoulder, shoulder, pushy, pushy, elbows out, push, push, shove, 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 head down, follow the wheel. Two kilometres to go. Look at them checking back over, over to see how far they've got with their lead men. I think somehow the pace is still a bit too slow. There's still too much of a watch here. Some people can jump from the back. They've got to go that bit quicker. Don't forget then, as they come down with one kilometre to go, the sharp right-hander with some 400 metres, and then down that finishing straight. Who's going to get the first opening stage of this, the 1995 uh, Tour of Spain? The Volta, first time it's been held at the back end of the year. A lot of lads in there still want to score a success before the final end of the season comes, just to reinforce their contract for next year, or in fact get one, as the case may be. But of course, lots of prize money at stake, over half a million pounds on the line at the end in Madrid when this uh, field finally hits the big capital city of Spain. This is a tricky little bit then, heading in along that straight road ahead of them now, down the road, they'll see the sharp right-hand bend, and then into the finishing straight at the Gran Via del Reggio and Carlos. Still telecom on the front. Still a big bunch there, though, in contention. Oh, it's heart stopping this, isn't it? You're in there, riding with it, round the bends. And now you can see, well, they've got to get to the front and go for it with one kilometre, but they've still got that sharp right hand bend with some uh, 400 metres then to go. The Top men must be in the uh, top 20 or 30 places now, and it's Telecom on the front, winding away here. Also, the Psycho Mercatonuno are in there, pulling their man through too. But still, it is Telecom driving hard at the front on behalf of Eric Zabel, twice stage victor in the Tour de France. And there they say, come on through, boy. You see, one by one, they're pulling off the front, and it's a Gavis team from Minali who lead round there. A Telecom get blown out of it. This is a sharp right-hander, 400 metres to go. Till then, Manali sitting comfortably in here, and Blylevens is back in back fifth place. The bell is just behind him. Have they done enough to come past? And Jalabet is in there in third spot at the moment. Jalabet switches to the right. Jalabet comes around the outside. Has he done enough? Jalabet strings across onto Manali's wheel. Manali on the front. Jalabet goes through. Go, 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 said the man. Blylevens is there too, but Manali puts his hand in the air. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Blylevens was alongside uh, Jalabet as Manali's hand went in the air, and they nearly collided. We'll have to see a photo finish of that one or certainly a slow motion action replay, because I think Manali got it, but only just. It looks like somebody's gone over the top. Something's happened here. They're pushing and shoving all over the place. I hope this is not an action replay run. At that time, we had that terrible clash in Amontier, but, or has probably somebody dropped dead of a heart attack? I don't know. I'm still in one piece, but what a sprint. Oh, somebody's gone right over the barriers. One of the psycho riders.
that just shows you what these bike riders do, the risks they take. It is ever thus in sprinting at this level. The speed they come down those finishing straights at well over 40 miles an hour. It was the great sprinter Guido Bontempi who said a couple of years ago, and I've said it before on television, I don't apologise for repeating it because some people tune in for the first time, particularly you golfers out there. He said, when you're going to sprint, when people said, are you worried? He said, look, he said, if you can't stand the heat, you keep out of the kitchen. And this is the kitchen at full boil. Jalabert in yellow on the right, switches right the way across here. Minali had a beautiful lead out by his Givis team. That's the fellow in the pale blue on the front at the moment. Jalabert has got his wheel. He's in the yellow. Behind him, it's the... Rider from the TVM team, Blalevens, who comes across. Yalaba gets sandwiched in between, and they push and shove. And I'm just trying to see what happened then. As to who was second and who was third. That was a really tough finish, but uh, certainly Minali was the winner as far as I could see. Being pushed away there, that's uh, Funiciari of the Psycho team who somersaulted over the barrier in the pushing and shoving that was going on uh, before they hit that uh, sharp right-hand bend in towards the finish. And here he comes now then, Funiciari. I told you that right-hand uh, bend was a bit of a danger one, and those riders screaming into it at some 40 miles an hour. He went over the top, we didn't see it happen, but uh, there he is now riding on in. He's got to finish the stage today, he's being looked after here by the, the doctor. He certainly didn't want to go on that stretch. He's determined to finish that. This just shows you what bike riders are about. I know there are other sports where that would have been the end, the stretcher would have come out and oh, all singing and dancing and crying, but these riders want to finish. They want to get back on their bikes. They want to ride tomorrow. 3,700 uh, kilometres of the 21 stages in the Tour of Spain. And despite that crash, he's back on his bike. He wants to finish. He wants to start again tomorrow. So let's look again then at that uh, tremendous sprint finish. That beautiful lead out for Manali stage victor last year at Portsmouth in the Tour de France. Now chalking up a victory in the Tour of Spain in fine style. The rest just could not catch him. And on the right hand side of your screen, watch this as his teammate says, Go, boy, go. And he does. It is from the side, Minali. And, well, I rather think perhaps that Lylevans beat uh, Jalabert into second spot, Zabel there into fourth. That was a nice gesture, I think, by Jalabert to put his hand out to Lylevans after that very fierce sprint. And there we are. No trouble for the man on the front, but mayhem just behind him. Well, there we are tomorrow, the second stage, uh, San Asensio to Santander, 223 kilometres. We'll be on air tomorrow at uh, 15.40 Central European time. Uh, that's uh, uh, one hour ahead of you people back in Great Britain. Do tune in then to watch us, uh, bringing you the uh, stage two of the tour. But golf is coming up next on Eurosport. The European Masters, sponsored by Canon. Happy team to sit on their back wheel when they've got uh, Maori in this leading group at the moment, 21 seconds back on general classification. They need, in fact, to, to slow it down, not to urge it on a bit. Uh, still, uh, Gianluca Pienagorda is hammering away here at the front. Well, it's his birthday on the 23rd of uh, September, so uh, he's going to celebrate what that be, two, uh, seven, he's going to be, yes, 27 years of age. And I think he'd like an early birthday present by picking up this one if he could do. A new pro in the ranks this year, and looking for a moment of glory here as the field thunder along here.
The Onza team following Baffe round this bend. That breakaway group was something like about 17, 18 men still clear at the front. That's uh, Zula just behind there. Then the other yellow jersey you see behind Zula was that one of the overall lead at the moment, Oliano. This is a man on the road who's got a slender lead of some 100 metres on a pack chasing, but the Leader on general classification, trapped now something like about uh, uh, what 40 seconds back on this man. And Malcolm Murray in that uh, chasing group, winner of the Tour of Spain in 1991. Technically, it got to a point when he became race leader on the road, but anything can happen now as they head in towards this big port of Santander. Now here, certainly not noted for his sprint. The motor roller right there in the red and blue, but we don't know much about number 14. Just have a look at him at uh, Rodriguez of Artiak. Artiak doing very well here. They've got another rider in this breakaway group at the moment. And then we're just looking at uh, Casas Garcia. This is the Benesto rider, uh, uh, Apalachio. No great interest on the general classification as far as he's concerned at the moment. Just a chance, perhaps, of pulling back that uh, leader and trying to get a stage break. See, there we are. Sanchez also in there for Artiak. They're doing rather well, these Artiak riders, to get a, a man, or oh, well, three men in that uh, breakaway group. And the big, powerful fella here, Gianluca Pienagonda, still hanging on for grim death at the front. Big fella, isn't he? Well, I said that the Artiak had uh, got. Uh, Strength in depth at the moment, and they've fired off uh, Casas Garcia. They've got uh, two Garcias in their team, Casas Garcia and Espana Garcia. This is uh, Casas Garcia trying to chase down our lonely, and he might just about hang on. But certainly indecision in that group behind. Oh, they're coming at him quick and fast as Bert Dees come thundering past now. It's every man for himself at the moment. One kilometre to go, our leader's gone under it. Dietz goes under it. And about 15 or 16 men howling at his uh, back wheel right behind him. And then the rest of the pack trying to close down that gap. Here they come. Will he do it? He might just about hang on to the finish. Looking back over his shoulder, what a well-timed move then uh, by Gianluca Pienagonda, who stayed out in front. He hadn't got caught, he was out there on his own, plowing away to get his first big success. And look at this group coming up behind him then. But whilst he wins the stage, We're not so much bothered about this one, but we're, worried, we're very happy to see him win this thing. But in this little group, if my calculations are correct, we've got Maori in this one, and behind the Amarillo jersey is in that main pack. So watch the clock down there. They sprint to the line now. Bang on that one there. That was Maori went across the line, I think, in that uh, second spot, which would have got him some uh, eight seconds bonus. Had to wait confirmation for that one. But here comes the main pack, and in that main pack is the jersey of the overall lead, the Amarillo jersey of Aliano. Uh, they thunder across here now. They all be given the same time for the first rider hitting the line, and on my watch, that's 19 seconds. So this is so close. Uh, Maori had 21 seconds back on Aliano this morning. If he finished in second place, he got eight seconds bonus just now. Now. So, in fact, they gave him 27 seconds. Ah, oh, I will have to just say I'm going to leave this one to the judges uh, because, providing my information was correct that Mali was in that second group, then he might just have sniffed the jersey, but it's going to be oh so close. The victor. Gino Capone Pinagonda will have a look back at that uh, superb ride of his coming in here. But my clock for the second group, you see on the top half of your screen, the big bunch stringing round, trying to cut the deficit on this little group here. Which, unless he blew, unless something went wrong, contained Malcolmari. Elation then for the Palti rider, Pinagonda. They had a stage victory in the Tour de France with Uchikov. They've now got one here 
They had stage victories with uh, Lombardi as well in the Tour of Italy, so they've now got the Grand Slam, the triple, the Pulte team, a good bunch of brigands, and let's see now, well, I'm not sure whether Bari was there in second or third spot. Best of the riders calling off and waiting for the official results as we are doing. It's so difficult to pick everything out on the way in. But no doubt about this man's performance. A superb piece of time trialling. So for a new professional, what a great way to go into your first year. In the paid ranks. No, uh, 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 no, 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 that went, I think, uh, probably on this side, I think it might have gone to the, the telecom rider, uh, Dietz, on to second spot, and probably... Number 14, I think, might have got third spot. And Maori will be out of the uh, bonuses. So, in fact, only 19 seconds separated, according to my watch, that little sprint there in the main field, so... Uh, Perhaps he won't have got the jersey, but it's ever, ever so close. So as Pinagonda, the action replay shows his fellow celebrating yet again. That victory and a big bunch come sundering up behind our Side view from the camera on the finishing line. They look at it here, it was ever so close, but I fear that uh, Maori is not in the in the bonuses at all. But well, I said it'd be a nice birthday present for him. 23rd of September, he will celebrate his uh, 27th birthday, and uh, I think on the table in the tour they could put. A picture like a birthday card of this final finish and flourish of the young Italian. It's nice to see it. The, the look on his face, you know, the, he just went off the front, they couldn't catch him, and uh, just shows in cycling that you do get these occasions when, I won't say an unknown, but somebody who's come new into the ranks gets an opportunity. All the big men are fighting today. They, they Jalibur sat up and then they're all jumping around. And uh, whenever all the big sprinters are watching each other, waiting for their teammates. As I was saying earlier on, if you watch the early part of our programme, you get the splits happen. One split happened today. And if you're in the wrong split at the wrong time, boy, that's it. So there'll be a few people tonight when they're sitting around the... Uh, tables at dinner, team man's asking a few questions, and rider asking a few questions. But, uh, and there, as they sprint down here, Maori in the centre, fighting to get himself those eight seconds bonus. So I rather feel we're going to have to wait for the official company to come in, but Maori would have closed the gap. He may or may not have just sniffed into first spot, but somehow 21 seconds down Alano this morning, according to my watch, he didn't quite make it. But tune in tomorrow for Eurosport to find out what happened, or best of all then, uh, as the, yeah, Maori back in fourth spot, he didn't get any bonus at that moment. So, in fact, if we can't get it for you uh, live, uh, from Spain, then we'll have to give you the news on Eurosport News later on tonight. But we're hoping we've got an extra minute now to, to we can get this information. There's only just a couple of seconds, uh, a couple of seconds uh, difference between those two. But um, certainly, it's uh, very close. It just shows how this race still is going to be 
uh, very, very tightly fought over the next few days, Victoria with the, with the flowers, but the uh, journey tomorrow will take them up to finish some 600 metres above uh, uh, sea level, and that final climb will all happen in the last uh, three kilometres or so. So they've got a short little sharp climb, just some, uh, what, uh, 200 or 360 kilometres, sorry, 360 metres uphill on the stage of 206 kilometres. So tomorrow could be very interesting indeed. Watch your sport news tonight for the overall results, and I will be back with you tomorrow. David Duffy is saying bye-bye uh, from the Volta. Two hundred and six kilometers to travel from Santander to the Alto del Naranca, a now famous small mountain climb overlooking Oviedo, and a very tough ride indeed to finish the stage. The overnight leader was Gianluca Pianigonda of Italy. He was just a handful of seconds ahead of a whole name, whole series of big names: Laurent Jalabert, Alex Zula, Abraham Alano among them. Well, the first major breakaway of the day involved the Dutchman Tom Cordes. He broke away after 116 kilometres, had a lead of over five minutes at one point, but was picked up 60 kilometres later as the riders prepared for that final climb up to the Alta del Naranco. So they were all joined together as they rode through the now wet streets of Oviedo. And just at the foot of the climb, there was a fall which somewhat upset things at the front of the main group and prevented one or two riders from getting into the leading positions. It involved Manuel Fernandez and one or two other Spanish riders, none of them though seriously hurt. So the leading riders in the stage were Laurent Jalabert, Gianluca Pianigonda also up there, Stefano de la Santa of Spain, Alex Zula of Once, the Swiss rider who's many people's favourites for the Tour of Spain this year, and also Marco Pantani, the Italian who certainly loves it in the mountains. But it was to be Jalabert who made the decisive breakaway. It came about two kilometres from the top of the climb. And Jalabert, who recently finished fourth in the Tour de France, certainly made it look very easy. None of the other favourites could go with him. And Jalabert quickly increasing the time gap, and that meant that he was now not only riding for the stage victory, but also riding for the overall leader's jersey. Behind, one or two riders in trouble, and they included the favourites. Bjarne Ries there in the Danish champion's jersey, recently third on the Tour de France. Johan Brunel of Belgium, Melchior Mari and Marco Pantani and Pianigonda wearing the leader's yellow jersey. All of those in trouble as Jalabert laid on the pace. Stefano Della Santa, though, went with him, as did Alex Zula and the Spaniard Abraham Olano. But no stopping at Laurent Jalabert, his 18th win of what's been a quite incredible season for the Frenchman. And that meant that Jalabert was now watching the clock to see how much time he had over Pianigonda. In the end, he had enough to take over the leader's jersey. Abraham Olano and Alex Zula came in in second and third. Zula is still many people's favourite for the Tour of Spain. For the moment, his teammate Jalabert is in the yellow jersey, but there's an important individual time trial on Saturday, and whoever comes out on top after that will probably take over the leadership of the Once team and will be protected until the end of the race. So let's confirm what happened today on the stage. Laurent Jalabert winning by 10 seconds from Abraham Olano and also by 10 from Alex Zula. The important thing is that the overnight leader, Pianigonda, was well back and that meant that Jalabert takes over the leader's yellow jersey. And this is how he stands overnight. It's Jalabert, Olano and Zula, the 1-2-3. Pianigonda is 17 seconds back. Then comes Mielcio Mari and Brunil there in seventh place. Mari, Zula and Jalabert are all in the same team. The leader on the race was Frenchman Laurent Jalabert. Well, the race should have started in Tapia de Casariego, but the riders found it impossible in the extremely strong storm winds of over 100 kilometers per hour. Well, the riders tried to protect themselves in their team cars as they rode along the race. But it obviously proved impossible to ride. And the race officials eventually decided to cancel the race and to move on by coach to Villalba, which was 88 kilometers from the finish, and so have a shortened stage on the tour today. 
So in theory, a straight run to La Coruña and then a mass sprint. And that's how it turned out. The riders protecting themselves still from a strong wind as they rode along the final 80 kilometers, though it was possible to ride. But there was certainly no lack of action. And although Laurent Jalabert there in his yellow jersey had few problems today, one or two riders were certainly creating headlines. The Venezuelan Leonardo Sierra and the Spaniard Ramon Gonzalez Arieta fell off and then they came to blows. It certainly is a rare sight on a cycling race, though they obviously wanted to finish off the argument on the road, proving that it's not easy to fight when you've got those cycling shoes on. It's not known what the fight was exactly about, maybe we'll find out later, but what we do know is that both men have been thrown out of the race. So into the final kilometers of the stage and the Gavis team were working very hard for Nicola Minali of Italy, already a winner of a stage on the race and the favorite to win if it went down to a sprint. Everyone had to work, including Bjarne Ries, third on the Tour de France and the very useful Russian Vladislav Bobrik. But they were all to be surprised by the German Marcel Wust, who recently lost his job with the Groupmon team in France, which folded up, but quickly found a job with the Castelblanc team in Spain. He broke away with about 100 meters to go and he stayed away nobody could catch him winning easily in the end in a surprise victory his first major victory in a major stage race and his first victory of the season certainly a good win for him all the big names were in the main group so no change in the overall standings though Laurent Jalabert who's also a useful sprinter picked up useful points there taking third place in the sprint and useful seconds in the overall standings. But Marcel Voust was the hero of the day, and Laurent Jalabert is still the leader. Confirmation of all that for you, Marcel Voust winning from Stefano Zanini of Italy. Jalabert taking third place. He can climb in the mountains, he can sprint when it's on the flat. He certainly knows how to do it all, Laurent Jalabert, and will take some beating in the Vuelta this year. Overall, Jalabert slightly increases his lead over the Spaniard Abraham Olano. 12 seconds now is the lead. Alex Zula, his teammate from Switzerland, is in third place. And then Gianluca Pianigonda, the former leader of Italy, in fourth. And down alongside the river, getting very close to that five kilometer point, the field split. Five kilometers to go and something like about 20 men are split around about 30 seconds in the group. The big group behind them there trying to pull this one back but uh, the riders that really matter in that uh, main group at the front. Again, Anse controlling it and Reese back on the front is accelerating again. This with five kilometers to go. Reese is determined to have his way today. He split the field by that uh, tremendous attack. Brunil went across to mark him. Minot sat on his wheel, didn't come through and help him. And who's coming up now? Yes, you've got another man in yellow. You can almost call this the, the, the custard tart race, I suppose. All the yellow things flying around all over the place. As they're heading up then, up alongside the uh, river here. Uh, the river Mino it is that lies to the right-hand side of these riders. And the rest of the field fighting their way back. And it's now going to be even more difficult, I think, for Anse to control it, because some of the riders have just come up in that uh, second pack, waiting for a chance to, to jump across. And here we go, four kilometers to go. Now, this looks like Pistatori on the front at the moment, the uh, Polti riders stringing him around. Back at the tail end of this little group. That uh, climb then some 400 metres from the finish as the split is still there. They haven't quite made the junction. It looked like they caught them back, but in fact the split is still there. And that is the chasing group coming up at them. So there's only 10 seconds as uh, they go across the River Mino in towards the finish 
of the stage at Arenza. 179 kilometres today. The sort of finish that might suit, might suit Jalabert, who's looking so strong indeed. Can he make it? This is the 11th uh, victory of stages in the Tour of Spain. Last year he took seven victories, Laurent Jalabert. And he's nicely placed in this group at the moment. This was, in fact, Lorenzo where Jalabert took his first victory in the Tour of Spain in 1993. He went on then to get another nine victories such. You see, just 130 metres above sea level, that just short, sharp little climb to sort the riders out. And going along the, uh, the Corsa Progresso, They'll turn that sharp left into the uh, Corsa Corona, uh, Corona and then up along after that uh, very short uh, left-hand bend, uh, a swinging bend. Let's hope there's nobody swinging into barriers like we saw the other day into Peña Trevinca uh, to the finish at the uh, Plazo del Cosme. Crowd waiting patiently for these riders to come in. The fastest schedule today of some 41 kilometers per hour due to finish at quarter past uh, but we're running a bit late at the moment and the average speed for these riders now somewhere around about 37 kilometers and they hammer in toward the finish let's see who's going to get this one stage five of the tour of spain the field still bunched together we've had the first bunch sprint of the tour was won by Minali for the Gavis team. Uh, Blalem in second, Jalabert back in third. Zabel from Telecom was in fourth spot. They're the sprinters to look out for. As we had the other sprint uh, yesterday, sorry, the day for yesterday, uh, the, sorry, the sprint yesterday. Vus was first, Zanini second, Jalabert into third spot. But that was a uh, one which uh, was at the end of a lot of uh, long, hard, uh, uh, fighting and, and riding up uh, a big drag towards the finish. This isn't quite so tough as far as they're concerned, but still the sprinters are going to have to work hard on this little climb just to stay in contention. The bunch pretty well compact now. The yellow jersey of Jalabert with the white cap on. Can he get his 11th victory? Can Zabel for the telecom team in the purple and white take the stage? Can Minari in the blue do it again with one kilometre to go? And they're still all packed together. That little short climb then has uh, sorted out the riders. They're beginning to struggle a little bit, but now the speed is accelerating. Inside the final kilometre. Ahead of them then rise a left-hand and then a further left-hander. Just around about another, what, uh, two, three hundred kilometres to go. They'll have that uh, sharp left-hander. Then no more than about another uh, hundred kilometres, another left-hander, and then shortly the finishing straight. This is going to call for nerves and uh, an absolute caution, but nerves of steel to go at this sort of space. And right in the centre there of the reservation, they're now split on either side. Are you in the right group at the moment? You have to know which group you've got to be in. They're coming out the other side of it. They're going to get those left-hand bends. And now with somebody's flicked across because they're on the wrong way. This is the first the left handers. Another one yet to come on the brakes end. Out of the saddle, they're coming in towards that to finish now with the field. All trying to regroup at front. And again, it's a Palti rider on the front of this one. Straight up, Minali is also in there for the uh, Gavis team at the moment. On the right hand side, uh, looks like Alana's trying to go, but he can't really make it. Jalabert's on the front, swinging the left hand. He knows his finish well. He went, oh, his back wheel nearly went then. Jalabert nearly went on that uh, bend. It's very wet, very slimy, but Jalabert again stamping on the pedal. This is where he, where he won his first ever Tour of Spain stage. The rain comes down. Jalabert hangs on and tries to make it to the line. Jalabert gets across it in first spot. Looks like uh, the Mappe rider, second behind it could be Baffy, and Alano uh, 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 was back in. Uh, four spot but uh, Jalabert showing tremendous skill in keeping his bike upright as he flicked round at that left hander just showed his supreme strength to get his 11th ever victory in the Tour of Spain his 18th victory of the season Jalabert looks unstoppable at the moment he will have got an extra 12 seconds bonus as well from that sprint he took a third place in one of the uh, sprint bonuses further down the line as well so that's giving him 13 extra seconds bonus he looks back now to see the damage that he's doing on the rest of the the field let's try and check out those men behind him I saw a reddish colored jersey but it uh, wasn't no the fourth place wasn't Alano it might have been Vus because that 
uh, even fifth further back than that. That was a supreme sprint by Laurent Jalabert. Let's look at that one from the side. Plenty of time to throw his arms up in the air. And Baffick was in third spot. Looks like Biashi just down behind him, and uh, the rider from uh, Gives could be Manali in second spot. So let's have another look at that one then. Jalabert out in the front. Comes along here. Benali looking back, Baffy fighting to get on the wheel, but Jalabert is takes the victory. A day full of uh, eventful action on the Tour of Spain. Even the riders did come in in a group. They had more than their fair share of problems further back when the wet weather conditions uh, caused the crashes that we had that put uh, Machia out. Looks like a broken collarbone. The rider from the GAN team out today, Nicola Orbe, with his crash. But Jalabert Jell Jell stayed out of harm's way to take the stage victory. And yes, he survived the course today. An extra 12 seconds for being first across the line. One second he got in one of the sprints further down. So Jalabert is inching himself away from the rest of the contenders for the crown. The uh, first big hill that we're going to hit, well, mountain in fact, is going to be the Sierra Nevada. And we hope the conditions get somewhat better than this one. As we look again at the action replay of the stage finish here into Orense. Uh, tomorrow, the stage for Orense Zamora, there's uh, some pretty big climbs early on, and it could in fact be the day when uh, a, a breakaway group could form. They've got some, some pretty good climbing to do until about halfway through the race, and then it's all downhill, really, into the finish at Zamora. So if it does regroup, we may see the sprinters in action, but the way that Jalabo is climbing at the moment, I think whatever happens uh, on the midway point when they go the 1,210 metre uh, climb just at the edge of the uh, uh, the border to Zamora. They go over the Alto del uh, Podoleno, 1,330 metres above sea level, just after crossing the border. Uh, Jalabert has been showing superb form to be able to climb with the rest of them, so I think that he may well be able to keep that jersey. And after that, on uh, stage 7, on the 9th of September, we have the uh, Salamanca time trial, uh, when they're going to cover just over 40 kilometres. The stage eight from Salamanca to Avila uh, is uh, fairly undulating yet again, and the stage nine likewise. But the big one where the sting is going to happen is when we get away onto stage 12 into Sierra Nevada. So if one could think that the form that Jalabé is showing at the moment, that he might well be keeping that jersey on his shoulder. And the Anse team, uh, yes, there we are, Jalabé, Minali and Baffy. I got that one right. Um, so I didn't quite pick up who was in the fourth spot but uh, Laurent Jalabert getting ahead of Minali, Adriana Baffi in uh, the third spot. Baffi will have got himself four seconds bonus and Baffi on general classification uh, started out in the race in good form but he slipped down a bit now. He was what, uh, second after the prologue time trial. He did an extremely good, good ride then but uh, Baffi who finished in fifth spot yesterday in the sprint uh, will be but disappointed, I suppose, he couldn't close up on Jalabert, but who can beat him at the moment? This man looks unstoppable. And a shame we didn't have that action replay of them going around that uh, bend at the bottom where the, uh, where, the, where the paint was. And I was saying to you earlier on, when the rain comes on to paint, it makes it very difficult. But Jalabert's bike handling was absolutely brilliant. He could have come down, brought a lot of riders down, and lost a lot of time. But he didn't. He stayed upright and uh, showed a clean pair, or wet pair of uh, wheels to the riders behind him. So Jalabert having opened his season up in fine style, winning the Paris after taking stages in Tour of Mallorca and the Tour of Valencia, because he spends a lot of his time riding in uh, Spain, being part of a Spanish team, the Once team. Jalabert went on then to uh, take the Flesh for Loan, the Grand Prix uh, Amorabitia stage in the uh, Midi Libre. Tour of Catalonia first and uh, second stage. There we are. That's, I said to you earlier on, that Jalabert is dominating the mountains. He's just one third category climb today. 
uh, which didn't really make much difference to the overall classification. Our Tongi collected up for some useful points just to move himself up a little bit on, on the classification on the King of the Mountain because he was second behind Pianagonda. Neil Stevens, it was in, in third spot over the uh, Maison del Vento, the house of the wind, as the hill was called, the mountain was called. And uh, so Jalabert will have the white jersey yet again. Again, with that sprint just then, he'll get himself 25 points for being first over the line, Jalabert. So he's reinforcing his position on the, the overall sprint classification. Olano, not there in the top three, had started the morning in second spot with 48 points. Uh, Pinagonda back in third with 41. So Jalabert will have advanced his position on the on the sprint classification as well. They, those three intermediate sprints, Vaisman, Tudenberg, Gualdi, the order there, Andrew Jafroff uh, struggling with that uh, Spanish tummy, I suppose you would call it, uh, back in fourth spot, Jalabert in fifth spot. So Jalabert is picking up the odd uh, point here and there, which even more so he's looking to pick up the odd uh, few seconds bonus, and he got an extra second today with that uh, one third spot that he had. Not miserable conditions. Well, certainly if one goes further down country, it's a lot better. I'd always like back in Great Britain at the moment, and the sun is still shining and the earth is still baked, but perhaps you'd like to send some of the uh, the rain across to you to uh, help with the problems that we've had with the war. There, you can look from this shot here that as the shot goes. See that sharp uh, bend just down there? That is where uh, they came around there. You can see the zebra crossing as well, and that was where the danger was, where Jalabé just flicked his bike upright. It was a, a brilliant performance uh, to, to, to get himself upright like that. And and uh, so Westman, the German rider, taking the jersey for the Sprints DYC, the whiskey company, sponsoring this particular section of the race. So the telecom rider, see the size of those thighs, that's just what makes a sprinter. Well ahead in that competition at the moment from his G German uh, countryman Teutenberg. Well, I've just got confirmation, in fact, that uh, fourth place was Biashi from the Palti team, as I rather thought, and it was Vust uh, back in, in fifth spot. The other man I saw who was just beginning to fade. I mean, originally, I confused the jersey colour with that of Alana, but it was Vust uh, that faded. He just didn't get his sprint right and finished in fifth spot. Sorry about losing the picture. We're having a few problems today. And that just shows you the position that Dolano now has gone back to 25 seconds behind Jalabert. Zula at 34 seconds. They start this morning 12 seconds back, Olano Zula 21 seconds, but uh, the 12 seconds bonus has moved Jalabert even further away. Because all this can change when we get into the mountain, that big first mountain climb up for Sierra Nevada, because we'll be sort of counting the riders across the line, not with a stopwatch, but a calendar, I suppose, when they get very tired legs, and particularly when we get into the Pyrenees, when I'm hoping that Robert uh, Miller will be able to join me in the commentary box, and I'm sure he'll be following the performances of Mandela Jalabert with a great deal of interest. So still on, say, say Zula might be the overall victor when we get uh, to Milan at the end. Well, we'll have to wait and see, and I hope you'll stay with Eurosport uh, to watch the Tour of Spain right the way through. We're coming for 21 days. Sorry about the break-up yet again here, but uh, I'm going to say now for myself and Julian Rondondo, hasta mañana. Right angle, right hander, but there's still uh, something around about uh, 300 metres to go to the finish, so they won't have the slight problems they had yesterday when the dampness on the road caused uh, Jalabert's back wheel to skid and jump on the painted zebra crossing. He stayed upright now, Pulte launching attack. You see that wind on the uh, uh, flags there blowing across from left to right. Palti is ever quite prepared to launch attacks. I'm taking advantage of our little motorcycle. No, he's out of sight, out of mind. The cameraman has got to do a double take and go whacking round and over the top of him. And this looks like Uchikov at the moment. Well, he's out of sight, out of mind, because he's, he's stuck in front of our cameraman. And the rest don't be too bothered. Perhaps they've missed him. They've got to look beyond the camera. I think the commissaire will say, come on, chaps, out of the way. Look at him jumping all over. He's very naughty.
always motorcycle. You sort of get a bit of backdraft, but the other thing when you're going up the mountains, uh, you get all the smells and fumes from them as well. Some of the motorcycles carrying commissaires, some of them carrying the television cameras, some of them carrying the fixed cameras, and some are also carrying a commentator uh, for radio all the race. And uh, Ruiz Cavastani, who's probably well known to a lot of British followers of the sport, Ruiz Cavastani is one of the Spanish commentators that's on a motorcycle going in amongst the group here uh, to pick up the action and relay it to the listeners uh, back at home. Yes, it is Uchikov, as I said. It looked like the bold man that beat uh, Lance Armstrong and took that stage victory in Tour de Belle on the Tour de France. Riding with a spinach wheel at the back and with an ordinary wheel at the front, so I suggest there might have been some concern about the crosswinds today. Although the spinach wheel doesn't suffer with quite as much of the crosswinds as some of the other disc or semi disc or triple or quadruple spoke wheels are supposed to do. As ever, the hammer has now gone down, and uh, as ever, I'll give you a rundown on some of the sprinters here. Baffy riding for the Mappe team in there. That's the bluish coloured jerseys. He really let fly yesterday uh, trying to stay with uh, Jalabo. They swing round now, and uh, Baffy finishing third spot. Another bluish coloured jersey, the pale blue one, is that of uh, Menali. Uh, Nico Milami of the Gavisting. It was uh, Menali then who took that uh, big stage sprint finish at Longlonio. But now they're turning round this uh, sharp right-hand turn here, and there you can see the pale blue colours on the front of the Gavis team. Other sprinters in this group then, Marcel Vust, who rides a reddish coloured jersey, who's also had a stage victory to his uh, success. He took one in La Coruña, so watch out for the red jersey. There, Bjorn Rees on the front, trying to keep it at harm's way, but he's setting it up too for Minali. The uh, Polti riders have nearly, nearly, nearly got a, a stage victory, but not quite so far. Their man is Biashi, and they're trying to set him up for a good sprint finish too, as well. Other top sprinters in the gang here, Eric Zabel of the Telecom team. We haven't seen much of him so far. Uh, the Blathermans, uh, the rider for the TBM team, he's also not been in the frame. And uh, George Hincapie, according to Paul Sherwin, for the Motorola team, is going to get better as the race goes on. Perhaps it might be his day today. But let us not forget that Laurent Jalabert also has a tremendous punch of speed. And let's hope that the Montezuma's revenge that got him this morning uh, has not taken the fire out of his legs because he got the stage yesterday in Torrenza. And now we'll be looking for another stage victory to go to the one that he had at Alto Daranco. So look out for the yellow jersey with the white hat on top. The, there he is, he's positioned just on the left-hand side, almost now in the middle of your screen. That is Jalabert up there. Uh, as the riders here winding it up for the Castle Branch team, trying to set it up for Marshall Vust, the Mercatone Uno team. Looking for Biashi coming through, but I think they've uh, had it now. And they've probably gone just that bit too quick. Tremendous speed, well over 40 miles an hour as we go swinging round alongside the ramparts and down along the river. This is the river, the Rio Giero. That bridge, the Viejo Bridge, past that one, the next bridge they come to, the Nuevo Bridge, they'll turn sharp left. And the field has split now under the pressure. Sharp left they'll go, up the Avenue de Portugal. All the down has crashed, this is the problems. Yep. The bunch had split, but these lads are well at the back, so let's hope nobody's been badly hurt by that touch of wheels. Just give you some idea. But there's something down that they're pointing to that caused this problem. Was it somebody who ran out, or was it just a ride that's down? They really have gone down with the bang. There it is, look at the melee now. The front contenders were well at the front, but that was a very, very bad crash indeed. And that is uh, Josi Santa Maria of the Artiac team, I think.
One kilometre to go, and on the front, the TVM team winding it up the moment, setting it up for Joan Barlemans, but this uphill run seems to have taken the string out at Singat. There's another TVM right on the far left-hand side there. They're switching all over the place. You can see that also in there at the moment, uh, the German rider Teutenberg is trying to go for this one for the, the TVM, t for the telecom team. But... Um, Sorry, Sabel, no, but is he going to stay the course this time? He's been suffering so far. And this could suit something like Jesker Skibby, the long straight ride up here, but then it flattens out. But will Skibby stay out? I'm sorry about the picture break at the moment. Are they going further up to one of our cameras, a bit further down the road? Swinging then round in this uh, right hand. This is the one that matters. They're coming down the finishing straight now with just some, uh, what, 300 metres to go. And it's all systems go. They switch left and right. Jalabé is still in there. He hasn't been brought down the crash. Vuss is in the centre there, in the red jersey. Left hand side is Baffy trying to go for this one. Benali is on Vuss wheel. And Abdul Jabros start to come up as well. Nevertheless, it's Vuss on the front. Marcel Vuss has got this one stick to the moment. He's been tracked all the way through by Baffy. Tracked by Benali. Benali starts to come past Vuss. Vuss looks he's gone too soon. Does Benali get on the line? It goes to the Gavis Rider just ahead of us and uh, Baffy back in third spot Jalabo safely home across the line there to also I can see Pantani coming in and uh, he obviously got out of the way of that crash but um, that really what a nasty smack the doctor here will certainly be taking a very close check on the ride. There are two things they do, first of all, that is to make sure they've got any broken bones. If you look at the uh, finish, the sorry, the group coming in here now, this is the riders that were just in that little group that uh, crashed down. So the, the uh, yellow jersey is safe and ho home, uh, Jalabert. But um, the doctor's first thing to do is to see if any broken bones and if the man is concussed and if there are no broken bones and uh, he's not concussed and he wants to get on his bike and ride in, then the doctor will allow him. It looks like it might be an ambulance case for the rider from the Artiac team who looks like he's not capable of going on. That's his race over and done with. A oh, great shame in that crash. It took out the Arctic rider. And his race is run. At least he was able to stand up and get into the ambulance. I'm sure you people back at home watching this will feel that little sort of blip I get in my heart when you see a crash like that. You, you realise then what these, these lads are doing, hammering along at some 40 miles an hour. There's no vicious cut and thrust in this. These actions just happen from time to time. We've seen some terrible things on television, but they recover, they come back, and Jalabert, who's coming across the line now, is one such rider who had that terrible crash uh, in Armentier in the Tour de France last year, and he spent virtually most of the season. It wasn't until he came back at the Tour of Catalonia, the back end of the year, that when he won a stage, that he got back on his bike, and he's been in action again. In fact, he said that he wasn't going to be seriously contesting the big sprints out, that he had a moment of thought that perhaps it was just that dangerous, but he's still in there, and uh, Jalabert missing out that time, and probably somewhat affected by the tummy bug, which has hit, hit so many riders as well. And uh, Disappointment then for Artyak, who really have been a very, very strong team in this race. They've been surprising, I think, a lot of the top men. And here anyway, look at the state there. He's, you can see he's his bum for Feliz, he's obviously skidded along the ground, and that's uh, going to be a bit sore tonight. Have to sleep on his face, I suppose, as uh, Zinchenko, the Russian rider coming in, riding for the Santa Clara team. Uh, skidded along the, the road. That's very often what happens most of the time when bike riders come down. Unless you have the misfortune uh, to run into a barrel and go head first into it, when they crash, uh, they may put the hand out and break the collarbone, as Mahir yesterday cracked his collarbone in his crash, but I'll say he looks like he might be able to ride the World Championship. He doesn't look down to keep him off his bike for more than about seven days. So we're looking back again in the midst of the melee here. That's some of the riders that got delayed by that, uh, that crash. That's uh, Politano down there, 159 for the Psycho team. Also actually brought off in that crash then was uh, Ang Anguita of the Castle Blanche team. So that reduced the number of people that could help uh, Marcel Wurst out in the, in the sprint run to the finish.
and so it looked to me like uh, Jose uh, Santa Maria of the Artec team brought down in that crash also getting back on his bike there 169 Zinchenko that we saw riding in the doctors travel uh, just behind the race uh, in fact there are more than one doctor there are several cars as such but the, the, the chief doctor of all is right behind the uh, the commissaire's car then the doctor's car is next so he's the first very quickly on the scene the ambulances are also very close behind them uh, we don't get a tremendous a lot of, of terrible accidents in cycling but uh, we do get quite a few as you can see in those sort of sprints and uh, the doctors are uh, not a good doctor but also understand the cycling injuries some of them uh, uh, like uh, dr bon on the uh, uh, the, the Tour of France have specialised in uh, the sporting injuries and particularly cycling injuries and they know exactly what to look for when they've seen a crash come down because it's, it's their decision, their judgement on uh, what should happen. So disappointed then for the Artec ride to be out of the race. We've already had uh, one retirement today when uh, Audrey Zola decided he had enough. He'd had a bad crash and had ridden up for several days, but um, another man out of the race in Santa Maria of the Artec team following that crash. Well, we've probably got about 167 riders left in the race at the moment. The time trial tomorrow, uh, Salamanca, 41 kilometres. It's on uh, at 16.15 Central European time. You can see there the seventh stage. They'll start in reverse order on general classification, which means Lauren Jello, who still keeps that yellow jersey, will go off uh, last of all. And uh, down there, I can see the chap with the camera and the baldish head, uh, Graham Watson, well-known cycling photographer, will have some pictures for the cycling magazines of that crash for you to look at. But uh, then let's be uh, sort of vaulted about this thing. These things happen in cycle racing, but at least after all the tummy bugs and troubles that happened today, Jalabo keeps that yellow jersey. And so from myself, David Duffy, the Eurosport uh, team on the board, so my good uh, friend, the Eurosport man down alongside us, the Spanish fellow Julian Rondondo, has been great help to us again today. Uh, uh, hasta mañana to you all. I hope you can join us tomorrow for the time trial stage of the Tour of Spain. The gap's then quite close because Jalaba has 27 seconds ahead of Elena. Zilla back in 38 seconds. It could all change tomorrow. Join us then to see what happens. D'Alessandro just gone through the checkpoint there and he's in 10th spot at the midway checkpoint still the fastest rider there uh, michael anderson not only overall but fastest at that first checkpoint uh, uh, angel luis casero uh, just two seconds back in second spot now they came off we've seen just uh, those two finish recently pascal lanza finished earlier now pushed down to fourth and then the sprinter specialist he's back in uh, sixth spot and really anderson must be holding his breath now with the uh, faster men out there on the course but uh, he's just shown that he can beat Casero, just shown that he can beat uh, Ekimov so the uh, the team from Spain, Cisco Sal, will really be looking uh, for their man to finish in the um, top half dozen, maybe a top three place yet, you don't know but as always in time trialling, in, in tours and particularly if you people out there waiting to see the athletics on, uh, on Eurosport are just going to hang on with us here on the cycling programme let me explain what they do as we go through the race the, the Tour of Spain or any of the big tours the rounds are, 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 are counted across the line and uh, their time is taken every day on the line and in fact just to confuse people in this race we have bonuses as well 12 seconds 8 and 4 at the end of the race anyway each, each stage but nevertheless it's all about time the man who's got the shortest time for the distance uh, will be the overall victor and here we see there on the right hand side of the screen Anderson is leading 31.46 at this point his fellow Pietro Rugamov coming up now uh, desperately trying to stay in the top ten he's not the world's greatest time trials on the flat but he's damn good when it comes to going up the mountain climbs and he's another man Ugramov yes they've had a tremendous stack up going into the finish of the stage this enormous uh, crash uh, into uh, Zamora 
when uh, one of the riders came down and got caught off in the, in the ambulance. And Paul Lugerbop, we've just seen him there, lost something like about 40-odd uh, seconds or so. I'll just check the exact time in a minute for you, but he, he lost time when he got uh, stuck in, in the crash anyway. Here the encouragement, if you can call it that, uh, being delivered to uh, Ronald Jalabert, who is the overall race leader. He's a man who's got all the best times so far when you add them all up together, and therefore he starts last of all. They go in reverse order, general classification. The earlier riders are starting off at uh, one minute intervals, and we've now got out of the 180 uh, so started. Uh, we've got 164 left to the race at the moment. Jalabert, therefore, being the the overall victor has got the, the best time. But it's only a slender lead at the moment. He's only got 29 seconds on general classification ahead of uh, Alano, 31 seconds ahead of Pianagonda, and 51 seconds ahead of Maui. And all those riders will be at the back end. He's the last one on the road now. Two minutes ahead of him on the road is Alano. Another two minutes is Pianagonda. Another two minutes is Maui. And what will be happening now is that the time checks will be coming back because the team managers who are uh, good at this game and they know what they've got to do. Oh, here we go. We usually get the horses involved in Spain for some reason. They like to gallop along the side, but uh, and the horn there blowing. In fact, that's going to frighten the horse to death, I'd have thought. I'm not quite sure if it's making Jalaba go faster or the horse, but um, there are some crazy horsemen in this part of the world. We've seen it before, but this time at least the horse has got a rider and controlled it. I've known time the horse has bolted into the bike race. But here then, this time trial, it's what they call, by the way, the race of truth. You see Jalabert here riding on that white line for two reasons. First of all, he can just concentrate on the line, not even having to look too far ahead. The road is totally closed, no worry about uh, uh, parked cars and so on, or cars coming towards him. And also, when the road is actually painted like that, it's a bit smoother. And what he's doing now, he's trying to ride down that white line because A, it makes him, it enables him to concentrate uh, on just following the straight line, but B, also, it's that much faster. Uh, here we are then. Uh, oh, it's changed. Anderson has been pushed back now. Bjorn Rees, uh, the man who frightened uh, Indurain in the Tour de France this year. He was five seconds up on Indurain with some four kilometers to go in the time trial there. He's now gone ahead of Anderson. Brunel at 21 seconds and they came off behind him. So Rees could well take the time trial today. But uh, Rees on general classification. Let's have a look at the old sheet here. He's one minute and uh, 18 seconds down on Jalabert. He's, he's got to go some to take that uh, yellow jersey off Jalabert. But um, certainly that cracking ride then from Anderson. Looking here at Felix Gassas Casas. He's lying 12th there on general classification. One minute 57 seconds down on this man, Roland Jalabert. Again, for the benefit of those of you who've probably not been watching Eurosport's coverage of the Tour of Spain as the race has progressed and the days have gone by, this man Jalabert has uh, now had 18 uh, victories so far this year. Tremendous performance. He's scored 11 victories in the Tour of Spain. Last year, he won no less than seven stages. And if uh, you were watching the Eurosport's coverage, in fact, whether it was on uh, Terrestrial State and Channel 4, or even if you watch the news, and uh, in the Tour de France uh, 12 months ago, the low 12 months ago, there was an enormous pileup in Amontier, and uh, the riders went crashing down when a policeman stepped down to take a photograph. And this is one of the riders who fell flat on his face. He had to be taken off to hospital. He lost a lot of teeth. He bust his mouth wide open. And in fact, he then was only fed by a tube liquids. He just couldn't eat anything. Uh, and I remember that one of the radio stations tried to... Hello, oh, Zilla, leader, 48-29. There will be a change here. That he just said leader, 48-29. Looks here we have a Zilla now, 48-29, has gone in to the lead. So Zilla, who was one of the riders brought down in the crash yesterday, lost uh, 1 minute and 41 seconds, apart from the trouble that he was suffering with the diary that everybody else had, uh, in his team had had, except the two of them who didn't have the spaghetti bolognese. Uh, now Zilla has gone into the lead, 48-29, pushing uh, Michael Anderson down into, into second spot. For some reason, our director decided to go to slow-mo picture here. As the sun beating down, it's getting hotter and hotter. Oh, there we are, that looks like we've got Zula coming in the background then. We're a bit too quick. There are Serrano's time. Anderson on the right. See that 48-43 up there below the Aguila board? That is the time that he had to beat. Zula now coming in, because they're concentrating on the road with Jalabert, who rides the same team, the Onse team. 
And so long as the man is going to be tipped to probably win this Tour of Spain, we've got a long way to go yet until we get to Madrid in two weeks' time. But this must give him some confidence after that crash yesterday. And the diarrhea problems seem to have uh, gone away from him now. 48-20. Uh, in fact, is his time at the end, which takes him way up into the lead. Marco Pantani coming through. Well, he's not the world's greatest time trial by any means. Despite his shaven head to minimise wind resistance, the singing Kojak, as he got named in the, in the Tour de France, where he won a couple of stages in the mound. Look at the little gear he's pushing round. He's not going to bust a gut, Pantani. He's just going to stay in there. He's not interested, really, in the overall general classification. He just wants to take the stages where we get up into the uh, Pennines, where we've got some really big, uh, tough climbs ahead of us. And also, we've got uh, a big climb up the Sierra Nevada yet to come as well. Um, so that Pantani, we're looking for that. In fact, on the 14th of September, we got to the top of the Sierra ne uh, Nevada, and that climb, when they get to the top, is 2,320 metres above sea level. They've already gone over a first category climb that day of 1,060 metres, so a man like Pantani will be looking to try and get a stage victory there. And again, when we get into the Pennines, when we go... A very tough day on the 20th of September on the Wednesday. They go the Aspen, 1,489 metres above sea level. Col de Tourmalet and the Luzard there, all of them close up on the 2,000 metres. So a lot of big climbing ahead of them. And a man who's got to defend uh, that uh, overall leader's jersey, uh, Jalabert, will be doing what he can today to stay in contention. Well, there we are, and Zula is leading at the moment. Anderson in second spot. Out on the road uh, is Zola Angelabert, the leader in the uh, Tour of Spain. He's got to ride some today to stay in contention. We've got quite a good race ahead of us then. We're sorry about the delay to the athletes from Monte Carlo. We're going to take you back there now. Stay with us on Eurosport. More action coming up. We're going to bring the Volta later in the programme. Bye-bye. The Tour of Italy. A crash here. Looking back at uh, Olano's crash. He'd been riding for just over 20 minutes on the seventh stage, the 41-kilometre time trial, uh, Salamanca, Salamanca, when this man came down. He started the day in second place on general classification, just 29 seconds behind uh, Laurent Jalabert. And that crash then not only upset his rhythm, but really knocked him about. Even so, Alano, suffering from that crash, went through the halfway uh, time check, or just after halfway time check, with a brilliant time of 31 minutes and 19 seconds. The fastest time that had been achieved before Alano went through that time check was that of Bjorn Rees, 31 minutes and 21 seconds. So Alano, despite the crash, two seconds faster than, than Bjorn Rees at uh, that particular point. Uh, Jalabert went through uh, third fastest at the uh, checkpoint, 31 minutes and 33 seconds. We're looking here at uh, Mokka Maori, who went through in uh, fifth spot, 31 minutes and 46 seconds. So right at the back of the field, there's a lot of riders here who are really battling for the top honours. And if uh, Olano keeps this one up, uh, that time check when uh, Jalabert went through in 31.33, he was 14 seconds down on uh, on Olano, who had that crash as well. And considering this morning that Olano started 29 seconds down on Jalabert, as here Maori has just got these uh, uh, four kilometres left to go. So behind this man on the road, Malcolm Maori, who actually started off just ahead of uh, uh, Pina Gonda, two minutes back from him, then two minutes back Olano, and two minutes back Jalabert, all starting at two minute intervals. Uh, the battle is being raged with great intensity at the moment. This fellow, Mark Amari, we're looking at now, was the man who took uh, second place in two of the time trials last year, behind Tony Romiga, who um, won the Tour of Spain for the third consecutive time. Our lights have gone out at the top there, but um, uh, the times will be coming in just shortly for you, but really, as I'm saying to you, the, the, the action really is back with Jalabert and Alano. One of the, that's the fellow down there with the shorts being ripped by that crash. The battle then still raging at the moment. Ugramov has come in back in eighth spot, uh, but as far as the overall uh, victory is concerned, Jalabert and Alano are locked here to see if Alano here, who took the prologue time trial on day one and took the lead in the Tour of Spain, can wrestle that off. Uh, Jalabert, who started just two minutes behind him. What a battle we've got here in the Tour of Spain. We've got athletics coming up again uh, in Monte Carlo. We hope that you on the athletics programme will stay with us for more action for cycling. We'll update you later on. This 
tour of Spain could probably go down in the Guinness Book of Records as the most incident-packed uh, tour of all times. On this 41-kilometer time trial stage, this man, Olano, has already crashed, but he's powering along here. He thundered through the uh, time check at the uh, halfway point with a brilliant time of 31.19 to put him into the lead. Bjorn Rees has also crashed as well in this time trial. The battle is on between Olano and Jalabert to take the stage today, and probably the leader's jersey might take, uh, might change hands. Alex Zuller's time is the one to beat. 48 minutes and 20 seconds for the 25 and a bit miles. Olano hits the line. 47-37, he's now in the lead and two minutes behind him on the road, Jalabert will be receiving time checks. Jalabert went through the uh, the time check just after the halfway point, 31-33, 14 seconds down on Alano. Jalabert, who suffered yesterday with the diary which affected most of his team. And I say what an incident packed uh, tour we've had this year. Not only the problems with the uh, sickness which affected 40 riders yesterday, we had the hurricane which didn't finally stop the race the other day. One of the motorcycles ridden by Commissaire got hit by the telecom uh, car. A police motorcycle was crashed and the riders very badly injured. We've had incidents every day in this race, and now it's going to be an absolute cliffhanger right to the end of this time trial. Jalabert starting two minutes after Olano, down by 14 seconds after some 31 minutes of racing. On the books, he should, in fact, then lose probably another 10 seconds from now. That could be 24 seconds he could lose. And going down in toward the finish now, Jalabert knows what he's got to do because Olano started this morning just 29 seconds on general classification behind Jalabert. The time then between these two riders on this then stage seven of the Tour of Spain. This morning they set out, 29 seconds separated them and they're battling it out to the finish. This race then just one week old has covered 1,149 kilometers of the 3,700 that's going to be covered. And here Jalabert battling to keep that uh, jersey on his shoulders. He's been in superb form. He's won a couple of stages so far in uh, the Tour of Spain this year. He won seven stages last year. He's not the world's most uh, successful time trialist, though, in the Tour de France on the second time, first time trial. He had to go quicker towards the end to finish in second, uh, sixth spot behind Indurain. And then at the Lac de Vassivier, he finished in seventh spot behind Indrain. He's not noted for his time trialing norm, but look at this now. He's 47.51. Those 14 seconds down on Alano. It looks like he's still going to finish in second spot, but what will the gap be? 29 seconds separate this morning, and there he goes across the line. Just 23 seconds behind Olano, which means that Jalava keeps that Avalino jersey by a slender six seconds. A cracking ride. Well, that really was something. Let's look back then at Alano coming into the finish. Despite that crash, he comes across now. He's won the uh, stage. Just behind him in the white jersey, Piano Gonda has finished uh, two minutes down on Alano, put in a fantastic ride. He may have won the stage, but as yet he's not taken that jersey off Jalabert. Confirmation then of the stage, Alano in first spot, Jalabert second, but on overall classification, Jalabert is still in the lead by a slender six seconds. This race is a cracker, and we've still got two weeks to go. Skibby. Uh Lalo Jalabert hammering along towards the finish. This man here trying to chase him down, Amal Kamari. Looks like he's decided now that he won't uh, persist in that attempt to close down his teammate. He's looking back. Yep, so Mari's just done what he wants to do by going over the top of the climb and taking third spot on the climb. And there you can see our Cameron getting some nice shots, front and back, a couple of television cameras. He's looking back to... Oh, there they come. So what have we got left now? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven... About a dozen riders now. But here's Veronk on the front. Well, 
I said he was waiting for the mountains before he could do a ride to try and get a stage victory, but he's left a bit late now, but still they've got something like about 20 kilometres or so to the finish, and he's driving hard on this one. The Lotus team, Lotus Festina, a bit slimmed down now. Looks like there's only one of the, his team in that little group. They do get in the way sometimes, our cameras. I know they give you a good picture. You see how they're going around the corner there, the, the two big motorbikes, where the riders can flip around much faster. And this, if you've just switched on to Eurosport's coverage of the Tour of Spain, let me tell you, this is Lauren Jalabert heading in toward the finish at uh, Avila, lovely old uh, wall town it is too. And a quick recap then on what has happened so far during the day for those who may have missed the early part of our programme. The sprints, the first sprint today, 37 kilometres. Weisenberg, uh, sorry, Weisenberg took that one from Teutonburg. Uh, the next sprint after 65 kilometres, this man Jalabert took that one ahead of Gualdi, Pistoli back in third spot. Uh, then we went over the first mountain climb of the day after some 81 kilometres had been covered. Jalabert was it went over the top of that one in first place. Pinogonda in second, Pistoli was third, Rincon fourth, Pantani fifth, Echave sixth, Brunil seventh, De La Santa eighth, and Bartoli back in, uh, in ninth spot. Uh, up to the top of that climb and heading on uh, to the, what, 91-kilometre point, uh, the lad uh, Fonicciari of the Seiko team attacked. He went away through the sprint to get the first uh, on the line there, 108 kilometres. Jalabert second, Maori into third spot. Fonicciari's biggest gap, 121 kilometres, was 1 minute and 8 seconds. And then they started, after the 121-kilometre point, to pull him back bit by bit as they went in towards the Puerto de Salinas. And that's where Jaraba attacks going towards that climb, took with him uh, the story. And over the top of the climb, the second climb of the day, after 156 kilometres had been covered, but the helicopter he has a lovely run down alongside the races. It's very clever. But look at those um, uh, pylons. You can see there, he's actually below, or very nearly below, the level of the electricity pylons. So these lads of these helicopters have to know what they're doing to bring you these great pictures. Doc? Oh, no, this, this is not the helicopter, it's a motorcycle, isn't it? Um, so, so Puerto de Sarinos is where Jalabé went away, 63 kilometres, well, on the climb up to there, 63 kilometres at the top, uh, he went over there, uh, in the lead with Pistoria alongside him and his chasing group, but then some three minutes down as Veronk here is powering away to try and cut that gap on Jalabé. Jalabert still stayed at the front over the third climb of the day after 196 kilometres being covered. And now getting the back end of the race, just some dozen men here. I'll say still well repped in this group, by the way. Zula's there, Stevens is there, Maori and Brunel. Ferrand now has just gone back into the yellow group, but they certainly won't chase hard now. So this man, Riley Veronse, heading in toward the finish at La Villa. His teammates certainly won't chase him down on that one. What a great day then for the Onse team. Four men in that group of about 11 or 12 riders behind. And here they are. Uh, that's David uh, Garcia that's in this little lot. Casero is there. Bartoli from the Seiko team has also made it. Olano, as we know, is there. Axel Merckx is there too. So Axel Merckx for Motorola in that back group. Well, at least he might start to do a bit of work, but uh, really the Onse team outnumber everybody else in terms of strength and depth of teams. Five minutes and 12 seconds. And again, Veronk tries to go on the right-hand side. Five twelve. Well, Jalabert is doing a brilliant ride here. He's held that gap ever since they went over that to time, uh, uh, that climb of the uh, Never Moral. When Pistori was at three minutes and fifteen seconds, the main bunch of four forty-seven. So he's, he's punched another half minute out of them on the run down and along the flatter part of the course. Brilliant ride by Jalabert. So getting inside the final few kilometres now for Lawrence Jalabert. He's not going to relax, so he wants to put as much time as he can do between himself and uh, Olano. And there is the walled city of Avilia. He's not got far to go now as he heads alongside the edge of the 
Wall City along the uh, Avenue of Madrid and then up in towards the Avenue of Portugal. Massive ramparts here on Avila. Very famous for the Saint Teresa, who at the age of seven tried to seek martyrdom in the hands of the Moors and then went on to found a convent in 1562 and was canonized in 1622. The very famous then Saint Teresa of Avila, who is co-patron of Spain. And there are the battlements of this town in the background. Massive, massive medieval walls. They've got some beautiful Romanesque churches too in this town. But Jalabur not interested in the scenery and what have you. He's just interested in climbing his final co cobbled uh, road up here. Well, we've been through some marvellous, marvellous cities. Salamanca the other day. It's a lovely story I've heard about, by the way, in Salamanca, that in 1832, Colonel Badcock, one of the Peninsula veterans, didn't understand why the centre of Salamanca was so devastated, and he was told that the French actually had put some gunpowder there, and the Spanish garrison, the chaps were smoking one day, and dropped their, their, their cigarette butts down uh, this, this aperture, and the whole store blew up and demolished part of the town. Well, it's an amazing part of the world in Spain. I know most people rush down to get to the sunny shores of the south of Spain, but uh, it's very interesting further inland, if it's, it's sparse. And Alano now, with Stevens with him, knows that all he's got to do is just try and keep as close as he can do to Jalabert, who's put in a brilliant ride today. And Jalabert here has got the absolutely well and truly stitched up. The crowd very appreciative of his performance. The Frenchman then riding for the... Look, uh, riding for the uh, Onse team which is a Spanish organisation for the blind. Well, the rain bunch in five kilometres back, that uh, lead of five minutes, there's no way they're going to catch him. Alano here knows he's dead. Don't... Yes, thank you, Neil. Y yes, we will do. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, there's Axel Merckx. Uh, I knew he's in that group. We've got his number coming up, and he's just behind uh, Stephen, so we've got one kilometre to go for Jalabert. I've also heard, by the way, in the Grand Prix for me, uh, that Max Chandris won that one. So, uh, people back in Great Britain, uh, followers of Max Chandris' performances, would like to know that he's just won the Grand Prix for me. Van der Broek second, and, yeah, Sorensen was in third spot. Nice wide street. This is really going to be a ceremonial, almost, I would say, lap of honour for him and now it's going to take him up by the way to his 19th victory of the season and uh, in the Tour of Spain it's going to take him up to 12 victories in the Tour of Spain he had seven last year Jalabert but this year I mean to take that yellow jersey and to ride off the front like he's done today he's shown himself to be an absolute true champion and when you think that he had that terrible smash uh, just over 12 months ago and uh, my thoughts went towards Chris Bourbon too had that terrible smash in the prologue time trial this in the Tour de France and though one is out of action for some time I know that Chris is uh, looking forward to racing down in the uh, come up in classic shortly sometimes when you have an accident it, it gives you a French chance to look at things and this man Jalabert came, came back that terrible accident he lost a bit of weight, he repositioned his riding, he started to become much better time trying, much better mountain climber, not only a sprinter, and he's just shown he's got guts to go right out and take the stage victory from the front. Brilliant ride by Jalabert. Absolutely tremendous performance then. To go away as he did do with Pistore, who's still hanging on for grim death between Jalabert has just finished and the main group are trying to close up on him. Something like over 50 miles Jalabert has been on his own, or at least towing along for story, and he's just punched an enormous gap between himself and this group here. He's almost, I suppose, put the Tour of Spain on ice, and now one can say, with that strong team, he could well ride into Madrid as being the winner. But this race has still got a long way to go yet, and nothing is ever for certain. And we've got some big mountain climbs to come yet again, as well, and once Pantani starts to recover, if Ronk starts to go, the race will still be under a lot of pressure, and these Onse riders know they've got to perform. But Alano certainly won't give up either. Alano, who, time trial champion, of Spain, road race champion of Spain, to missed out in the Tour of France this year owing to having had a crash. So he now 
leads the main pack round the ramparts here of this very, very old castle. Merck's back, what, in third spot. So that's the group then, uh, Bartoli, Ruiz, Casero, David Garcia, Rodriguez, the Portuguese rider, Veronque, uh, there, Zula Stevens, Maori and Brunel, uh, together with Alano, who's on the front now, have been able to pull back Jalabert with some very good work by the Yellow Jerseys team of the Onse riders. Look at those yellow jerseys, they've survived the day remarkably well. So these Roman walls are going down, were built in the years between uh, 1088 and uh, uh, 1091. So we're looking at uh, castle walls then that are some 900 years old. A fellow called Raymond of Burgundy, son-in-law of Alfonso VI, uh, did these walls, some designs by a chap called Cassandra. I don't know if it's the original Cassandra, but that's it. There are 88 of those little uh, cylindrical towers, by the way, and Brunel starts to go off the front. Not interested in history lesson or an architectural lesson. He's gone away now, past one of those uh, 88 uh, Kubos or cylindrical towers. They've got nine gates as well. And they surround the old city. And he's gone. There's one of the gates. Brunel then took that yellow jersey in the Tour de France, and here comes Pissori. Oh, it's a very good ride by this young pro. He's really showing again that Polti prepared to have a go at uh, getting stage victories, or in this case, getting a second place. And another man, another young talent to look for in the future. So many of the top old riders are retiring now that these young riders we're watching now are going to be the people that we'll be seeing on Eurosport in the future. And here, Pistori, he's absolutely burying himself here, isn't he? Look at that, second place. And he looks over his shoulder as well, he might do, three minutes and 15 seconds because that group can't be long before they come into sight. And it's uh, Brunel still hanging on to the third spot. And I'd say I've done a great ride today. Oops, be careful. This is the man that rode into Liège, tucked in the wheel of uh, Miguel Indrain to sprint past him and take the stage into Liège in the Tour de France this year and the yellow jersey. Brunel's had a few ups and downs in his career, but he's looking very, very good this year. And now he's riding into third spot. And Alana behind, bringing in the rest of the group. You can see Reese on the far side there in the red jersey with his arm bandaged from that crash. Still managed to hang on in there. Here comes the third place man. Brunel's just going to get it then. And look at that gap on the left. Because that will be the count back to Alano, who's lying second over on General Clad. Brunel is third on GC, by the way. One minute, 30 seconds down. So he's trying to punch some time out of uh, Alano. And 32... Uh, one and two and three and four and five and six. Yeah, 32. So back to Alano now uh, in that group there. So he's probably pinched uh, seven seconds off Alano as uh, Brunel and trying to close the gap on the second place man overall who had that terrible crash yesterday and the misfortune uh, to not get the yellow jersey again just by a slender six seconds in that time trial. Sorry, 23 seconds it was uh, he beat Jalabé Y, but uh, six seconds separated him. And there, Stevens looks back. And there is this beautiful old city of Avigo, which has seen another cracking day's racing. This uh, tour has been full of events right the way through. Somebody said it had some things go wrong in it, that we ought to put it in the Guinness Book of Records. But as far as Yalaba is concerned, his name will go down in the record book as the most uh, proficient or prolif prolific stage victor in the Tour of Spain. And if he keeps his up right at the end, I wonder if he can uh, beat his record of seven victories, which he did last year in the Tour of Spain, seven stage victories. In yellow again, Lawrence Jalabert. He leads also on the mountains and on the, the points competition. He didn't look too happy out on the road. He still looks a bit sad too, perhaps suffering from that tummy bug. But uh, that puts him yet again another stage victory. He won the one into Alto Naranco on the long gradual climb up there. He won the stage into Renzo with a superb sprint. He's had that leader's jersey since uh, stage three. And there is official confirmation of the top five. Max Axel Merckx, 
uh, finishing in fifth spot just behind uh, Veronk. There's a nice try by Axel Merck. He's always there or thereabouts. Uh, I'm sure that lad's going to be one of those we've got looking at in, in the future as well. So there we are then, stage uh, eight of the Tour de France and going to, sorry, Tour de France, Tour of uh, Spain going to Laurent Jalabert, who took the green jersey in the Tour de France. Fine performance in that race, and I wonder if he might challenge for the yellow jersey next year. He's finding complete new form, this man, and he really just rode like a grand champion today. He didn't just coast in with his team, just defending that. He attacked Tolano, and now he really has punched a big hole between himself and the rest of the field. Uh, tomorrow's stage, we're going to be on a, a lot earlier, by the way, the, the stage from uh, Alvia to the distillery's DYC. Uh, so I hope you come and join. I think about quarter past 12 central European time, quarter past 11 in the UK. So myself, David Duffield, join myself and Stephen Hodge tomorrow. But for now, bye-bye. Skimmy being encouraged here by his team manager. Just get, keep going, keep going, keep going. See the concentration on the face of this 31-year-old here, who's no stranger to winning stages in the Tour, but he always seems to try the difficult ones, ones with slight uphill finishes, which really make people hurt. And he's hurting people at the moment. I think it's hurting him too, but look on right his now face. Now he's got all descent until the little last uh, climb up, the last kilometre that I told you about. Ad Winans had a different look on his face there. Ad Winans is an ex-pro as well, and he's director sportif, and you could see a little smile appearing on Adwinen's face. Um, so as he hit the five kilometres to go, Mark, this group here. One kilometre behind there, yeah. so he's pretty well got it one if he doesn't fall off. Well, Adwinen used to ride with the old TI rally team some years ago, and in fact we're having a bit of a reunion in uh, end of November for some of the, the, the gang and many of them. It's amazing how many of the old TR Rally uh, riders be, have come into team management. Henny Kiefer has become team manager, Jan Rask become team manager, Case Plain has become a team manager, Art Vine has become a team manager, Yossi uh, Dakar was also an ex-rally rider. I think uh, the uh, number of team managers that have uh, come out of the old rally days were tremendous. So we'll have a real time now, there's, for... Uh, it's your lot. There's my on, teammate uh, yeah. Valerio Tabaldi who's come through Richard Varenk on his wheel. And I don't really know why they're doing that. I don't, I can't see a, a clear-cut reason unless Richard is going to use this as a launch pad to attack and get some time on Rhys. I know that he was mentioned in the paper today that he was sorry not to be able to get back to pass Rhys in the general classification because he had a problem with his wheel. He broke a spoke yesterday in the, in the, when Jalabert attacked and then didn't have the chance to change it because he, he couldn't risk stopping at such a critical point in the race. Um, it's great to see Tabaldi back uh, back uh, in form also because he's had a, a major knee operation uh, in January and it's really, this is his first major race back for us at Lotus Festina, so it's very good to see him. Well, on the general classification that uh, Stephen is talking about, uh, Veronk at the moment lies eighth overall, eight minutes and 37 seconds down on Jalaba. That's Veronk we're looking at on the right-hand side of the screen there. And uh, Rhys, who we'd like to catch up with, is six minutes, 50 seconds down at the moment. So there's uh, uh, something around about, what, uh, uh, 140 seconds or so, 147 separating. So it will be an opportunity because Rhys hasn't been feeling uh, too well. He had a crash in the uh, time trial. And uh, when, he, when he crashed, uh, he hit his head and got a bit uh, concussed and also hurt his back as well. And for some reason, he's, he's complaining a bit of stomach trouble. So uh, Reese isn't too well at the moment. It might be an opportunity of, uh, of, of taking advantage of that. No, riders don't deliberately attack somebody who's unwell. But uh, as you're saying, Steve, it might be a chance that Fernand wants to move up the journal classification a bit. Rodrigo is the Artec rider ahead of him. He's only at 8 minutes 22, right. so it's 15 seconds and between And it would be them. interesting to see if a couple of those riders, like Reese, have in fact actually been dropped from this group. Now, that would explain very well why Tabaldi here uh, is riding. They've obviously um, realised that someone who's ahead of uh, Verenk in the GC uh, is not there in the group, and they've obviously decided, OK, we're going to try and put some time uh, into these guys who have been dropped for Richard to move up in the overall. Now, that would be one very, very good reason uh, for, you know, the Lotus riders to also aid uh, Neil Stevens there um, to ride hard. The group's very small, David. Yeah, and the, the red jersey Reese wears with a white cross on. He's the Danish national champion. There are several reddish-coloured jerseys in there, but uh, they are the, the Castle Blanche team uh, jerseys, some of them. Let's see. Here we go. Skippy the descent down, here. down to the final climb. They cross a little creek, 
and then turn left up to the distillery. So he'll come across a little bridge, do a couple of uh, hairpin bends before, and then he'll turn up into the distillery. So here we go down across the bridge. This is a fixed camera, it looks like, uh, at the finish line. Here is, you can see the warehouses of the distillery, the whiskey distillery. So, Skippy then over the bridge, just that short, sharp climb ahead of him now to try and get the stage victory. One kilometre to go. Uh, Skibby is inside that final kilometre. The last time check we had, it was just over the minute. The field can see him on the uh, zigzag climb up here. He's looking back to, he loves this sort of finish. I remember him catching that, getting that stage victory in Evro in the Tour de France. It was a long drag, almost the same sort of kilometre. And Skibby is really trying hard now and still on the front then. The Anse team are going. <laughs> when we look at Skibby then, my co-commentator here, Stephen Hodge, was sort of almost riding his bike with him. <laughs> I know. It's great. It's great to be able to watch it in direct I mean it's very exciting I know I know what it feels like um, yeah and I mean I, I, it's great to be able to you know to share all this uh, with the this, you know the viewers well thanks for your input so far Stephen as we're now getting into that final kilometer they're certainly not going to catch uh, Skibby who's done such a great ride here another of his great glorious moments then to go to the stage victories he's had in the Tour of Italy he got his first stage in the Tour of Italy way back in 89 took a Tour de France stage victory in 93 another in 94 did Jessica Skibby and so now for the first time uh, in uh, recent what since 1991 he won a couple of stages then in the Tour of Spain looks like he's going to add another one clearly to his very very significant list one of left hand turns and you'll see the finish line flag or two left turns I should say and this is it. the moment that Skibby has been waiting for in this race that stage victory is a great man for stage victories it'll be his third then in the Tour of Spain no worry about now looking back over his shoulder he had that great concern after being away in that breakaway group as they went up the final climb of the day so as he comes in now to finish he'll done something like about 50 kilometers either with that leading group of seven men or on his own as Skibby takes the stage then at the DYC distilleries on this the uh, ninth stage of the Tour of Spain Skibby Plenty of time to sit up and savour that moment of joy. And I'm sure that uh, everybody will be very much pleased with that because he's a very likeable guy indeed. And uh, now he's coming, he's got to be interviewed by the press because he's another chap who speaks several languages. I remember uh, that it was him and there was uh, uh, Dagoto Lawrence and Lawrence speaking English and translating some French that they finished the Tour de France some years ago. They have to speak so many languages, these riders here. And look at Jalabert now into uh, third spot. Another great Spanish-speaking Frenchman riding for a Spanish team, the Onse team, who's a leader, and I think they've just got one of the uh, Palsy team riders just in front of them. And that could be Pistori, who was sharing the break with uh, Jalabert yesterday, who really has done a tremendous ride, moving up uh, into second place yesterday with that ride, and he's now on ninth on general classification. Nick Tony in the front. And Neil uh, now riding the sprint for Jalabert with Mari on his wheel. And Veronk was back in about four. Brunel then, then Jalabert. Launched himself off here. And the time gap will go back to one minute. We've got to keep our eyes open for uh, the, 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 the colours of the Gavis rider, Bjorn Rees, as he comes across the line. Jalabert thunders into second spot, gets four more seconds bonus in that group there. And uh, Rees is home and dry uh, in that group. So the efforts of Veronk uh, have led to nothing. The gap... A minute back as far as Kibbe is concerned, he's not interested in overall general classification, just interested in taking the, uh, the victory which he's taken. Rest of the struggling in to finish. A successful day for Jesper Skibbe. The DYC Distillery is one of the co-sponsors of this race. We've seen yet again another good finish here, that little long climb up towards the end here of the, of the stage. A short 122 kilometres, and just ahead of these riders then, that uh, trip another, well, now and a quarter on the very fast train down to our next stage of the Tour of Spain, which will be stage 10 from Cordoba to Sevilla. But stage 9 goes to this man, Jesca Skibbe, from the TVM team. A team which uh, is able from time to time never seems to work as a, as a team to uh, get team uh, uh, success. They seem to be able to fire individuals off all the time, don't they? Blalem has been sprinting well, he gets Skibby winning stages, uh, uh, Hamburg getting stages. So they all seem to be a rider in with something, don't they? Yeah, I think, I don't know, they're certainly not the same. You don't see the same uh, teamwork as you do with Onse or some of the other teams. 
Um, they have some very talented individuals who come up with the goods, you know, uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and that's enough to ensure, uh, you know, the success of a team, obviously. Um, Skibby's been a very, a very uh, consistent performer for these type of stage wins where he can get away in a group. Um, he's done some fantastic, you know, attacking with a kilometre to, to go in the tour when he won at Evera, as you said, David. Um, this is another example of where a guy like Skibby is extremely good. Uh, he's got a very good nose for the race, you could say. So there we are then, Skibby taking that stage in slow motion, one to be savoured, as I said, by the, uh, uh, the family in uh, Lancashire, who no doubt urged him all the way through, to Julie and Gillian Yates in Lancashire. Your man's won today, I'm sure he'll be very pleased with that. The rest of the group coming in here, just imagine, only 122 kilometres a day, uh, what damage was done then by that breakaway group of those seven riders, which... Uh, was hounded down by the Anse team and in particular Neil Stevens. And most of these riders were together at the bottom of that climb, which when they went over the top with 25 kilometers to go, you could see the damage that was done. So many of them be very happy, I think, for a chance to rest on the train, get back to hotels tonight, a massage, and then get ready for the, the stage uh, I've put over to Sevilla. They've really just got a couple of days after that, though, in the Sevilla Mar 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 Marbella, before we hit the one of the Sierra Nevada, when they finish 2,320 metres above sea level. So, uh, Jalabert will be certain, I think, to keep his jersey for the next couple of days, but uh, if you want to watch a cracking stage, uh, watch it on the, on the 14th September. That's going to be big, a biggie. Well, all this lot you see, this massive entourage of vehicles, they've all got to be packed up and driven right the way down uh, to the next stage while Stephen Moore rides are coming in here. And, of course, they've got to hang about, of course, now until the last man comes in today before they all get off down sure. to, the, to the train. I think Anse will be hanging around, perhaps not quite as long as some of the other teams. <laughs> no, most of their teams will be in. They've just shown strength in depth yet again. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's actually a, a stage of 120 k's, even though you've seen the group split up quite significantly, it is still a very short stage, and it does allow you uh, almost, it's almost a recovery stage, despite having a huge mountain like the Nava Serrata, uh, it is a, a case of it being such a short stage, you're not really um, using an incredible amount of energy as they did yesterday in a well over six hour stage. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really quite a reasonable sort of day in a tour to have. I mean, it it's allows you, okay, to have a short, intense effort, but then really to have a, a lot of time to recover. So, you know, I think uh, it's quite it's quite a reasonable sort of day. The weather looks like it's held out for them. Well, yeah, now, with uh, Skibby coming across the line now, they've got to wait some time. What, uh, go through what will happen with the riders now and what sort of food they're going to have, because obviously right. eating is very important. We won't talk about the spaghetti bolognese sure. again, but uh, uh, from now on in, uh, I'm not appeal where they're going, perhaps have seen this early morning programme back in England, uh, and then going back to their normal jobs, or maybe looking at tonight. These lads now have got to... Uh, something to do haven't they they've got they've got to uh, well that's right feed the and very what so, so what, what goes on from now the very first thing they'll be doing is uh, is showering quickly uh, I guess there's a facility arranged at the distillery is many of the team buses have showers I know Anse does um, they will be uh, immediately drinking a, an energy replacement drink uh, and then uh, in a short in within an hour or two they will have a, a proper meal uh, with a lot of pasta, and Jesper's receiving his. Uh, yeah, you just have a lot of drink. Of They're course. sponsored by a beer company. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if Jeff had a part drink of his champagne or his beer after. He certainly earned it today, hasn't he? He has indeed. Uh, yeah. I know that when Marcel Bust won the stay, they were saying that uh, the Castel Blanche team being sponsored by a, a wine company or wine, wine growing cooperative, that every day they had a bottle of champagne. Oh, they on, do. On, every on, on every the day they have a bottle of their bubbly <laughs> on the table. <laughs> I just wonder yes. how many of the bottles they had that day when Bust won the stay. Yeah. I bet there's more than one at the bottle there. Bubbly not something that you actually actually feel like drinking much of though I have to tell you um, you know it leaves your stomach quite acid and often it can leave you feeling a bit you know so that's why you spray it rather than drink it at the end of the stage <laughs> yeah well uh, <laughs> it's a great it's a great reward hey Jalabir won that sprint very easily didn't he look yep. I mean everyone's at at least two lengths behind him 
just shows the strength of the guy at the moment. Oh, we saw it yesterday, and that, that brilliant lone ride. And everybody in the paper, everybody's been talking about it since yesterday, that uh, how Jalabert riding around his own yesterday was doing just like the things that Fausto Coppa used to do, Merckx used to do, uh, the great champions of the past, he knows this world. Uh, the performance that Jalabert did yesterday really showed that he's the difficult man to beat in the vault of this year. And uh, so as the riders head down then to the next stage at uh, Cordoba, a good day then for Jesper Skibby and for Jalabert too, showing he's still got his strength. But it's a long way to go still in in the Tour of Spain. I'm uh, very happy to have uh, Stephen Hodge with me uh, during the uh, stage today. He's coming back tomorrow and the next day to give it more input into the uh, uh, race. So as Jesus Skibby once again shown in slow motion here tomorrow's stage Cordoba to, to Sevilla 170 kilometers on Eurosport 1530 Central European time Stephen Hodge will be joining me David Duffield for that program we hope you too can uh, join us or set your recorder but as ever make sure your recorder runs on a bit longer in case they're running a bit late but they're setting off down to Cordoba Galibar still in yellow 